I've talked before about how I don't expect freedom to exist in the United States for liberty to exist in 10, 20 years <clears throat> uh, if everything is done peacefully and legally through the legal systems and through the legal channels. Um, I've talked about how I believe there is a choice, right? That either in my lifetime, liberty will cease to exist or things are not done legally and peacefully 100%. Again, I'm not asking for full-on, you know, people lining up behind concrete cover in the streets shooting each other, right? I think there's a big area, a big uh, a big spectrum between everything is completely legal and peaceful versus at the other end you have full-on conventional warfare between the population and the federal government. I think there's a, a big wide spectrum in the middle of that. Um, civil disobedience is one of the prime examples of something that has worked in the past to effect change against a system, against an establishment that sought to prevent that change at all costs, right? But I still see people saying that this can be done completely legally, completely peacefully, that nobody needs to protest, nobody needs to get arrested, and no shots need to be fired anywhere at all. I've talked about how I don't believe that. But I don't think before now I've actually explained why and my reasoning behind that. See, here's the way I look at it. The people calling for peaceful, legal, uh, populist reform, right? The Robert Barnes of the world. You know, populist lawyers and other peace and, le and legal system advocates who are asking for everybody to, to trust in the system, basically, and use the system to their advantage. Their plan of action is that we start at the local level, right? It's trickle up liberty, basically. You start at the local level. You get local elections across the country influenced by populist movements and ideas, liberty focused, etc. Okay. I mean, shoot, that's already half done, right? Large swaths of the country are already, you know, non-establishment, freedom-oriented places. Can you do it in California? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, you start at the north, you get the north California, you get northern California really entrenched in that, you know, ideas of freedom and liberty and personal responsibility, all that good stuff. Then, you work your way south. In Oregon, you start in the south and work your way up north toward Portland and eventually toward Washington. You know? It's like you start in the area of the proposed state of Jefferson and you just spread north and south from there. Okay, maybe doable. Here's the problem that I have with this whole plan, right? Is that people talk about using elections and the legal system to, to, to spread out and go up the chain towards Washington, D.C. 
Okay, I see where they're coming from. Here's the problem. What legal system? What free and fair elections are we talking about here? Are we talking about the legal system spearheaded by John Roberts et al.? Are we talking about the Supreme Courts of Pennsylvania and Michigan and Georgia? Guys, those judges are in there for life. Are we talking about waiting multiple generations for this plan to come to fruition? Because even if that's the case, even if I could die happy knowing that some future generation is finally going to get the liberty that I deserve, here's the thing you're missing. Do you think the same people that set this whole thing up are going to let that happen? Do you think the same people who did what they did with the 2020 presidential election and all of the attempted legal battles afterward are going to let that happen? Now, if you want to go really conspiratorial, you could say that the 2020 presidential election was this subvertive plan decades in the making. And in a way, it kind of was. The demoralization that Yuri Bezmenov warned us about, really the culmination of that so far was the 2020 elections and the court shenanigans that followed it. Getting the people that they got into the federal courts and the Supreme Court I'm not saying it was all one big grandmaster plan by a single cabal of people, but one thing naturally leads to another, right? Subversion and demoralization naturally leads to what we saw in late 2020 through early 2021. Now, the inauguration of Joe, of Joe Mama and Chlamydia Harris is taking place tomorrow as of the recording of this video. And I hope it's peaceful. I hope it goes off without a hitch. And the transition of power takes place peacefully, legally, all that shenanigans, right? Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't matter which way it goes. The empire is already striking back, okay? Okay. And see, here's the thing. I'm not saying that the powers that be are going to micromanage every local, state, and federal election across the country from now until the end of time. Because they can't. No one can. But that's the thing. They don't have to. They don't have to. Let's say the Barnes strategy starts working. And you get local elections across the country on board with populism and, and liberty and all that good stuff. And states start ousting all of their establishment Democrats and Republicans alike. Eric the Rhino Holcomb, gone. From, the, from Indianapolis. No more job as governor, okay? Not saying anything bad happening to him. I'm saying he's gone from the capital. Establishment elites across the country from all kinds of state co uh, state congresses and, go and governorships all across the country start getting outed and populist Republicans, populist Democrats, populist third-party candidates just make sweeping wins all across the country. And even in Washington, ooh, representatives, Democrat representatives, establishment Republicans uh, in the House, 
and in the Senate. Oh, they're losing elections left and right, dropping out of Washington like crazy. And you've got you've got populist Republicans, Democrats, Tea Party, Libertarian, Guac Bowl Party representatives sweeping through the House of Representatives, the Senate, the presidency and state and local governments all across the country. And the plan to take back our country peacefully and legally is finally hitting its culmination. And then they strike. They were waiting, waiting for the right moment. See, it's not going to be a complete totalitarian Orwellian 1984 cont micromanaging control of every, every single congressional seat, every state governorship, every state congress, every local office. It's not going to be like that because they, it, it doesn't have to be like that. They don't need that. They don't need that. What they need is to wait until our populist uprising is close to getting there, close to being done. When we can see the finish line, that's when their sniper will line up on our kneecap, take the shot, and cripple us for good. When the new populist movement has 49 seats in the Senate and is about to gain two more, it's when they'll strike. When the populists who are all on board with liberty and the Constitution have 48% of the House of Representatives and they're going to get 3% more, it's when they strike. When Texas's oil and Indiana's corn and Michigan's cars and... Kentucky's livestock and ginger ale and whatever they do in Oklahoma, when all of that is rip-roaring, ready to go, and we're ready to split this whole damn country right up the middle and tell East and West and the rest of the Midwest, do you want to join us or do you want to lose us? That's when they strike. They'll bring all the celebrities they have to Nashville install whatever actors they need in Tennessee's capital. And right when we're ready to split the whole thing up the middle and say, you got to be on board with us or else we'll be the ones getting cut right through the center. They don't need to micromanage every local election they don't have to right when the finish line is in sight they'll hit one gubernatorial election a couple state congress elections some house seats a senator or two they'll 2020 the, they will 2020 general, as a verb, I'm using that as a verb, they will 2020 general the bare minimum number of elections that they have to, to leave us on the ground, crippled, down and out, 20 feet from the finish line. They don't need to micromanage all of the elections in the country to, to, to keep this from happening, to keep us down, because we're already down. We're already on the back foot. We're already the ones racing toward the finish line. They can wait. They can wait. They can let it happen as long as they have to. And right when that finish line's there, boom. Boom. That populist governor, 
that populist governor that was going to finally turn everything around state-wise, 49% of the votes. Those two Senate seats that we need to flip the Senate right on its head, not talking about Democrat or Republican, that doesn't matter anymore, we know that. I'm talking populist versus establishment. That's the new, that's the new, uh, the new duality, okay? It's no longer red versus blue. Now it's purple versus orange. Or, purple versus, hmm, I guess yellow? Because green would imply mixing blue in. Orange would imply mixing red in. It's, it's purple versus yellow. That's, let me put it that way. Yellow being for not just the Libertarian Party, but all kinds of populists, anti-establishment Republicans, anti-establishment Democrats, anti-establishment third party. When the yellow wave of populist, liberty-focused, personal accountability-focused politics and freedom and the movement, when they are right there, ready to take it all and win the cup bang right to the kneecap they don't need a ground war they don't need to install a camera in every home they just need the populists to be one Senate election away, one round of House seat elections away, one governor away from victory, and they can strike subtly, just a little bit here and there, that one governor. 49% of the votes. That one state Congress. Establishment wins by a narrow margin. Those two Senate seats. They go to the establishment. You see what I'm saying? The House always wins. You can't play the House's game and win. People go to casinos and some of them get rich. Casinos will pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to the guy who wins it all at the blackjack table. At the high limit, no limit blackjack table, a guy is walking away hundreds of thousands of dollars richer than he was at the house's expense. But the house collected ten times that amount from everyone around him. The house always wins. They don't need to micromanage it all. They just need a small number of surgical strikes and they win they keep us down on the ground shattered kneecap trying to crawl to the finish line and if we try to crawl if we try to limp they'll hit the other kneecap if we try to crawl they'll hit an elbow if we try to drag ourselves by one hand They'll break three fingers on that hand. Small, precision, surgical strikes at the exact right moment is all they need for this entire plan. This entire plan for peaceful, legal, 100% peaceful, 100% legal reform in this country gone with subtle needle-like precision in just the right areas. I'm not saying grab your rifles and go out and get ready to fight a massive ground war. I'm saying 
get ready for something that does not rely on uh, completely. Get ready for something that does not rely completely on elections and courts. Because if elections and courts were enough, we wouldn't be in this mess to begin with. But that is not to say that it's hopeless. I believe there's a middle ground. I believe there's a middle ground between just letting them kneecap us and erase the concept of liberty from the collective conscious of the United States and being violent and aggressive and starting a a full-on war. I think there's a middle ground somewhere in there that can give us the answer that we need. But I don't think that 100% peaceful, 100% legal methods are going to get us there. In fact, I'm certain that it's not going to get us there. Not without some arrests, not without some unrest, not without some civil disobedience, at the bare minimum. There's going to be some amount of, of violence, of clashes. Some amount of blood is going to be spilled if the mere concept of liberty is to exist by the time that 2040 rolls around. We can keep it to a minimum... We can do our best to prevent it, but if we rely 100% on ballot boxes and jury boxes, and we completely and utterly dispose of and disavow the ammo boxes, then it's going to get worse than any of us can possibly imagine ever seeing in our lifetimes. I don't want war. I want liberty. And I want liberty as peacefully and as nonviolently as it can possibly come. This is North Sea Hero, signing out.